So, what are we up to today? I uh, just bought this um, strut spacer kit uh, from eBay. Uh, it's come from Russia. Took a couple of weeks to get here. Um, full instructions in English. And the products look pretty good. It's very hard polyurethane. Metal inserts where the bolts go. And it comes with longer bolts to replace your, your standard ones, uh, which go on top of your strut tops. So I'm gonna chuck this in the car today and see how it goes. All right, so spanner in the works. I didn't even look to see what type of suspension this was. Uh, for its independent rear with a coil spring and a telescopic shock, not a McPherson strut, which means this spacer goes up there and lifts or lowers the shock by 40 mil, uh, but does absolutely nothing to the ride height because the spring depicts the height, so we need some spring spaces, which is a shame. So I've emailed the seller, the eBay seller for the kit, and see what he says. Ta-da! Okay, so I had to jump online and order some of these. Um, came quite quickly, a lot quicker than the other kit actually. And there we go. So now we have the full kit. So we need to crack on with it. All right, so I'm gonna tackle the rear shockies first. Um, two plastic covers in the wheel arches. And I've already started undoing that, but they've got the two top mounts for the shockies, one in each hole. And then we got the bottom shocky mount there, again, which I've already undone. Um, I've undone the rear sway bar, so the lower control arm can drop down when I do the spring spacer. Uh, and I've also undone that bolt there, so the entire lower control arm can come down to get the spring in. But I'm gonna do the shockies first and then come back to that. So we've got the shocky out. Um, this is handy having all this extra material here because when we stick that on the top of the shocky will still sit inside the car um, so it's almost as though these were designed to be extended the only thing we need to do is swap them bolts out all right so we need to get these old bolts out um, studs now, if it was flat, I would, I'd say don't use a hammer. I mean, we're not reusing them, so it's irrelevant. Um, but if for whatever reason we have to put them back in, we could damage these. Um, but obviously these have a point on them, so I can hit with a hammer and not break them. If you're going to put your shocky in a vise, uh, make sure you're not going overly tight with it because you'll damage it. And especially this section, the actual um, oil tube, do not crush that in a vise, otherwise your shocky won't work. This bit down here is just a housing, so it's fine. Longer bolts. Don't want to go in. Try a punch. Stubborn. Next trick. Ah. That's all it needed.
All right, this one don't want to go in, um, so I'm going to get a round file and just open that up a bit. All right, you can see we put a bit of damage on there. Uh, but like I say, that is just a housing. Um, no sort of oil or seals or anything in there. So I'm just gonna clean that up with a file. All right, so there we go. Um, spacer. And that can go back in the car now. All right, shockies are back in. Um, there's a spacer in place, sandwiched between the shock absorber um, top mounting bracket and the body of the car. So now we can crack on with the spring spacers. All right, so the plan we've got here, um, I've got a transmission jack. Most people won't have a transmission jack. You can do this on the floor using a trolley jack. But we're gonna jack this arm up to take the um, Obviously this spring's under a lot of tension, so we need to jack that up to hold the spring. We're going to get this bolt out, that bolt out. I've loosened that one to allow the arm to swing. And then what we'll do is lower this down, and the spring should expand and come out. As quick as you get out, it's going to be harder to get back in. Slowly down. Whoop, there we go. That's, that's going to be the tricky bit, getting that back in there. Just going to clean all this dirt up and then go ahead and put the spacer in try and get it back in could be tricky let's see how we go all right rubber spacer off spring spacer on
So the way I've got this position is going to hit on the disc here. Um, so now I've got the shocky bolt in, I can let it down. The shocky will extend, hold this, and then I can reposition. Alright, that's all in. Now we've got to line this up. This is going to be skewed, uh, so this is the hard bit. So I'm going to try and price it from one side with a screwdriver, get a bolt in the other side. You might struggle with this. Just be patient. So I got the bolt in from that side, but when it comes through, it's not going to be lined up on this side. So I'm going to put this in, hold it, tap the bolt, hopefully we get it through. Might take a couple of goes. didn't come through so I'm going to try and actually put a pry bar in and pry the arm and see how that goes Straight in. So now all we've got to do is put all the nuts back on. Um, you can tighten everything up. The correct way to do it is get the car sat on the wheels so all the suspension sits level and then tighten the bolts up. So what I'll do is I'll just nip these up now and then I'll reset them all when the car's level. Uh, once you've done all this your car's going to need a wheel alignment. Um, so now's a good idea to crack off and free off these rear toe adjusters because a lot of the times they can be seized. So I've just cracked these off and I've sprayed them full of penetrating oil. Um, they do turn both ways but if you get to the wheel alignment place and they're seized it's going to cost you a lot of dollars in labour to get them either freed off or, or drilled out. So now's a good time to address that. Alright, so that's one side done. Um, shock spacer, spring spacer. So now we'll just tackle the other side and then that's the rear done. Last job on the rear when everything's done. Make sure you put your sway bar link back in, both sides. And tighten them up. And then we can move on to the front. Alright, so up to the front. Um, the plan is to take the McPherson strut completely out um, because the spacer and the bolts go up in there. Um, so what we'll do is we'll 
undo the sway bar drop link. We'll get this bracket off that holds the ABS sensor and the flexi hose. Um, we got the two big nut and bolts for the hub. And then once all that's off, we'll go up top and there's three bolts that hold the strut in and then we'll pull the strut completely out. All right, so that's the bottom done. We just need to take the three at the top, take the whole strut out. All right, when we get this strut out, um, these nuts in here are pretty tight and normally quite hard to get out with the strut out. Um, so I always crack it off in situ. It's the safest place to do it. Just wind it up a bit, make sure there's still plenty of thread show. Yep. So that'll be easy to get undone, um, but we've still got some threads so that the spring doesn't go off. So I've taken two nuts completely off at the top and I've left one finger tight. Um, otherwise this thing's just gonna drop down and fall out. If you've got an assistant, it's easier with two, but you can do it with one. You just hold the strut, undo the remaining nut, and out she comes. So the bit we're tackling today for the lift is this bit here. So I'm not going to film this next bit um, because I have use of a professional wall mounted spring compressor. Um, most home mechanics will have spring clamps. So what you need to do is, so I've made a reference point to line it up. So white mark on there lines up with a white mark there and then they all run in line with the um, the collar uh, whatever you want to call it bracket where it mounts to the hub so all that runs in line and that's how I'll put it all back together um, so at this point you would put your spring compressors on tighten them down don't go crazy with them and make sure you wind them down evenly Maybe watch some separate videos on that because they are a death trap if you don't know what you're doing. So basically we compress this spring until the spring becomes loose in here. We're then unscrewing that, taking this off, and then we're gonna swap the studs in there. All right, so I've got this bit off now. Um, when you take it off, just be aware of this little um, slider plate. It can come out. Um, just make sure it's in when you put it back together because when you turn your wheel on your car that's what allows your struts to turn freely so just be aware that that doesn't fall out or anything so I'm going to swap these now um, same principle as before bash them out bash the new ones in and then put the spacer on all right so different uh, approach on this so when I've tried to hit that in what it's done 
because it's actually um, where's the camera separated the two pieces of metal um, so what I've done is deep socket over there and squash it in the vise And that's worked heaps better doing it that way. So you just need a decent length socket, obviously longer than the bolt itself. Flip it over and vice. All right, so that's all back together. Um, so we pop the spacer on. Easier said than done one-handed while videoing. All right, so spacer is on. We can pop this back in the car, tighten these three fully up, um, tighten the center one up, and fasten everything back up at the bottom. So I'm gonna put this back together now. Um, I don't think I need a video for putting it back together, it's just the reversal of removal. Um, some vehicles have adjustable camber via camber bolts here. These don't, they're just straight bolt up. Um, so you got the two bolts, 12, 12 um, sway bar drop link um, three bolts at the top plus the 17 in the middle and that's it really um, and then off for the wheel alignment all right so before and after figures um, so the front was a bit uneven that's actually come closer now which is weird um, the back's spot on 45 mil uh, the fronts have averaged around 40 which is good because the rear was a bit sagged so I'm happy with that um, the only thing on the wheel alignment I couldn't get the rear toe within spec um, obviously 45 mm lift's thrown it out a bit and front and rear camber is out quite a bit so I think the next investment will be some camber bolts uh, another wheel alignment and then we'll go some bigger wheel and tyres and See how the thing goes off-road?